It's a pleasure to be here with Commissioner Grant Stevens at the Police Academy graduation. Another 25 excellent officers joining our police force. As you know, there's been a significant focus on police cadet recruitment. $12 million invested by this government to ensure that we have sufficient sworn officers and over $81 million invested to ensure that we have a strong a recruitment and attraction scheme for our PSO officers who are doing excellent work assisting police. This recruitment activity will continue. You'll know, of course, that SAPOL has been active in market in the United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, of course in New Zealand as well, and there are well over 250 applications. Now, I think pushing up to over 270 from those jurisdictions. They're being scrutinised carefully, but we're very, very pleased that additional experienced police officers from those jurisdictions are looking to join South Australia Police, a very well respected and established state police force. We're also very pleased that our attrition rate is amongst the absolute lowest in the country at a time when there is effectively full employment in South Australia. These are very, very sought after officers and there are many employment opportunities in the market, but we want to ensure that we're not just recruiting sufficient cadets, uh, we're also looking to retain very experienced officers as well. Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. Um, as the Minister said, uh, it's always a, a great occasion to see uh, new police officers graduating from the police academy and moving into the front line to support those officers we currently have uh, out there pro providing a, a safer c for community for South Australia. The, uh, the efforts we're putting into recruiting at the moment are quite substantial and uh, we are actively encouraging South Australians who are thinking about a policing career to make contact with our recruiting section. Uh, we're really keen to see quality people joining the South Australia Police and as the Minister said that's being backed up by the international recruiting program which uh, we are confident will assist us in getting back to full establishment as quickly as possible. So that program will see um, up to 200 international police officers, currently serving police officers, coming into the South Australian Police Academy and being fast-tracked through uh, an induction program and training program and then being put out onto the streets to work alongside currently serving South Australian police officers. Happy to take questions. Commissioner, how far away are the first um, international recruits from joining the Academy? Uh, we're currently working through uh, the applications we've received so far, as the Minister indicated, well over 250 applications. And we're hopeful that we'll be commencing the first uh, international transition course uh, shortly after the commencement of the new financial year. And are we on track to uh, train 900 new uh, police cadets by 2022? That's the plan. We have, have a comprehensive strategy in place and there's a lot of work going into ensuring that we recruit sufficient numbers of local applicants as well as uh, reaching out to overseas to, to hit that target of and the, uh, getting back to establishment which requires the, the, the recruitment of 900 over a three year period. And in terms of retaining uh, recruits, uh, do you think there needs to be more mental health supports for frontline workers like the police? I'm confident that we're doing uh, a significant amount of work in the space of looking after our people. Uh, we have a comprehensive wellbeing program which includes physical, mental health, financial support, uh, nutrition support. Uh, Having said that though, policing does have its challenges. Uh, it does uh, require police officers, officers to step into situations that can have an impact on their wellbeing. We support them as much as we can and uh, we're also contributing to the current select committee which is looking at uh, the wellbeing and mental health of police officers. Can I please ask you to reiterate your comments on radio this morning and um, to speak about how much of a strain to resources um, protests like the one we saw at Wingfield are? Well, it shouldn't. It, sh it, um, it shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone that when we are required to deploy police officers to unplanned events or significant long-term protest activity, that it is taking police officers away from their substantive duties, and that potentially has the impact on our ability to respond to calls for assistance. We do our best to prioritise those taskings, and we do have a capacity to support uh, some of these unplanned activities but when these types of uh, events occur day in day out and every weekend uh, it, then it does become challenging for us to make sure that we have sufficient resources available to maintain a safe and orderly environment around a protest or a, a rally as well as making sure we've got sufficient police officers in patrol cars responding to calls for assistance. Commissioner, just on the topic of mobile phone cameras, have you asked the government for portable mobile phone detection cameras to roll out soon after the fixed cameras? 
Uh, no, we're currently working on the implementation and rollout of the fixed mobile phone detection cameras. That's our priority. Uh, once that program is complete, then I think we'll look at what opportunities there are in the future for expanding that capability and ensuring that South Australian road users are doing the right thing and holding those accountable when they don't do the right thing. Uh, Commissioner, just a, last question. Uh, can I ask you about Alan Hopkins, um, the fugitive um, wanted sex offender, child sex offender. What is he accused of? Is it rape? Uh, he's he's, he's um, currently wanted for sexual offences in South Australia and our plan is to ensure that we have our brief of evidence ready for when he is due to be released and uh, my understanding that is in um, December this year. Upon his uh, release being confirmed we will commence extradition proceedings and we'll go through that process, bring him back to South Australia to face charges. But on this spectrum, just really is it indecent assault? I can't elaborate right? at this stage. Commissioner, okay, just thanks. really quickly. Um, I just said that, that was the last question. It's all right. Thank one you guys, sorry. Thank You're you. welcome to... It's okay. just this last one, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just uh, quickly on Hayden, do you welcome the Supreme Court's decision uh, to impose an interim supervision order on Hayden uh, days before his release? As I've said, uh, time and time again. This is a matter for the Attorney General's Department. It's not something that affects SAPOL. Uh, in the event that there are restrictions or conditions, uh, we'll consider our role in ensuring uh, compliance with those restrictions, but the, the decisions in relation to uh, interim orders is a matter for the Attorney General's Department. You might have said the Attorney General is standing up this afternoon, so I'd be able to address those questions. Thank okay. you. Uh, just a question.